starting to fill out that coaching staff. So let's talk about it. What is up, Finn fans? Yep. Slowly but surely, starting to fill up the coaching staff, and we potentially could lose one of our coaches. Uh, I will get to that in one second. But real quick, you know, we keep asking, when does the press conference happen? When does the press conference happen? Well, the press conference for Mike McDaniels will happen tomorrow at 10 a.m. So if you want to watch it live and you want to see the questions that are answer, asked and answered and all that stuff, tomorrow at 10 a.m. will be the press conference. I know it will be on their YouTube channel live, I think on the website live, and I think they also say it will be televised in some areas live. Let me pull it up just so I can give you guys... Uh, yeah, it doesn't say much there. So if you want to check all that stuff out tomorrow at 10 a.m. And I will be doing a video on it after the baby goes to sleep. So you could expect that around the same time now, 6 o'clock. I'm going to watch it. We're going to react to it. I'm going to talk about it and all that good stuff. And you'll get that video later on in the day tomorrow. Other news. Uh, yes, Gerald Alexander, who is our, our defensive backs coach, is interviewing with the Jaguars. For the defensive coordinator position. Uh, I loved Gerald Alexander. Uh, if you guys go back and watch potential coordinator video I made last week. Uh, or early this week. I had Gerald Alexander maybe as a potential defense coordinator hire. Or if not that I'd still like to keep him as our DB coach. Um, so he is getting a, a shot and an opportunity with the Jacksonville Jaguars as their defensive coordinator. Um, very happy for him. Again. One of my favorite coaches we had really helped the secondary out. If you are like, why does he deserve this? Just go watch the secondary. Go watch him talk about football. Go watch. Use your eyes. Because I've heard people say that to me. So who is he? Why does he deserve this? If you don't see, you don't see. I'm not going to lead you by your hand to show you how good Gerald Alexander is. Uh, but, yeah, I'd like to see him stay. But is it... I don't, I want to, I'm going to put it, you know what? I always say I'm not going to talk about it, I don't want to jinx it, but now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to put it out in the universe. Vic Fangio. That might be why the Dolphins aren't, you know, interviewing him for the defensive coordinator position or haven't made it known um, that they're keeping the defensive coordinator we have now. Maybe, put it out there, I'm put it out there. Maybe the Dolphins are going to try their hardest to get Vic Fangio to come in as our defensive coordinator. Please. That would make me ecstatic if they got Vic Fangio as our defensive coordinator. Like, put it out there. And then, obviously, the thing that we're going to talk about the most in this video, and it's going to be a short video, but I wanted to come out and talk about this. The Dolphins have hired John Embry. As their tight end coach slash assistant head coach, essentially the same position he had with the San Francisco 49ers. And I like this move. I like this move a lot. Uh, John Embry has been in his position for years on years on years. You know, he was tight end coach in college. Uh, he was actually a defensive end coach with Colorado as well. So he knows both sides of the ball. Wide receiver coach, Colorado. He was with Colorado a lot. <laughs> When it came to coaching, UCLA. Then he came to Kansas City, was their tight end coach from 2006 to 2008. Tight end coach with the Washington Redskins, then now Comrades, I think they're called. Commanders? 2010. Went to be the Colorado head coach. You know, why not? You were there in multiple capacities. Didn't do great there. He had like a 4-21 and and record. Came back to the NFL. Cleveland Brown defense uh, tight end coach. Tampa Bay tight end coach 2014 to 2016. And then with the 49ers from 2017 till this past season, assistant head coach slash tight ends coach. And what I'm hearing is assist, his job as the assistant head coach was to help scout, was help look at players to potentially draft, look at players to potentially uh, sign, and he would talk to Kyle Shanahan about that. I'm also hearing he was pivotal in getting George Kittle the development he has in being one of the top five tight ends in the NFL. Pivotal. So to bring him in and to help our tight end group is, I love it. I love the move. I think it's a great move. 
uh, really going to help the young guy in Hunter Long. Will we keep Gazicki? Again, I don't know. He doesn't really fit the scheme that um, was run with the 49ers, but is Mike McDaniel going to run the same exact scheme? I don't know. I'd like to keep Gazicki, but again, <clears throat> I have no idea. Uh, but I like this move. Durham Smythe is a free agent. We have Shaheen. We have Hunter Long. We have Sethan Carter. Again, Smythe and Gizicki are free agents. I will talk about that probably starting next week when it comes to who we should sign, re-sign, uh, cut, all that stuff. That's all going to start next week. Hopefully, we start to see more of who our coordinators are going to be, more of who uh, is going to get hired. But this is the first domino. Because this is the first coach that was uh, hired. And if you guys go back and watch my potential coordinator video, I said John Embry might be uh, brought in as an OC. I'm glad he wasn't. Again, he didn't have much experience in that department. So I'm glad he is being brought in as a tight end coach, slash assistant head coach, which he was very successful with in the 49ers to keep that same position. Uh, notable players coached, right? These are players that were coached by John Embry. And these players that I'm going to start naming are pretty good tight ends. Tony Gonzalez, Chris Cooley, Jordan Cameron, George Kittle. Now, Jordan Cameron and Chris Cooley, they they kind of faltered off at some points towards the end of their career. They weren't with Embry. Those are four top tight ends that he coached. Tony Gonzalez, Chris Cooley, Jordan Cameron, uh, George Kittle, single season NFL tight end receiving record in 2018 with George Kittle. So, again, I, I'm happy about this move. If he can develop our tight ends or whatever with the way he did Tony Gonzalez, like he didn't develop Tony Gonzalez, but he coached Tony Gonzalez, Chris Cooley, Drink Cameron, and he developed George Kittle. It's a good move. It's a very, very good move. So, I'm, I'm interested to see, supposedly, Mercedes Lewis as well. Uh, I'm interested to see how. This might affect maybe Gaziki coming back. Maybe Gaziki sees that we're bringing in good coaches and we're um, bringing in good guys, and he's like, "I'm going to stick around." We'll see. Again, I will talk about that in who we should resign video because the Dolphins have a long. The reason the Dolphins have the most cap space in the NFL right now is because they have a lot of free agents in that market. Some I don't expect to be resigned. Again, I'm not going to spoil it. I'll talk about that, but yeah. Get ahead of myself. Be sure to comment below. Let me know what you guys think about the signing of uh, John Embry. What do you guys think about the potential of losing Gerald Alexander to be a defensive coordinator in Jacksonville? Um, if I, I said this on Twitter, he deserves it. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Jags hire him as a defensive, co uh, defensive coordinator. I would be surprised if they don't because the man deserves it. Uh, but, yeah, tomorrow, 10, p uh, 10 a.m., press conference uh there is travis wingfield had a fantastic interview with uh mike mcdaniel i might do a reaction video for that later tonight and then uh obviously tomorrow we'll get that video so i might do that later tonight a live reaction well not live but a reaction video to what he had to talk with travis very very good conversation go check that out uh but other than that guys comment below like i said uh short video kind of just give you an update on where we're at in the coaching situation uh but yeah comment below i will see you guys either later tonight talking about and reacting to the travis wingfield video or tomorrow when uh, i break down what was said in the press conference do not expect i think big o and omar kelly talked about this yesterday do not expect any questions to be asked about brian flores and the tampering and the bribing don't expect any of those questions but i hope and pray I hope and pray that they ask good questions. Who is, like, if I'm one of the, the beat writers, if I'm one of the guys sitting in there, I'm asking them who is in control of what, who has what responsibilities. I want to know, Greer, are you doing the draft? Are you doing, like, what? who has what responsibilities so we can finally focus on who is to blame for which bad decisions? Because with Brian Flores and Chris Greer, I knew he had control of the 53-man roster and of the coaching like who's to hire for assistance, but we didn't know anything else besides that. And we hear rumors that, oh, Flores didn't want Tua, he wanted Herbert. And then we hear from multiple sources that all three of them wanted Tua, but he did sour on Tua as the 2020 season got along. I want clarity. Give me clarity. Don't, don't you know, it's the tough questions. 
but yeah, that's all I got for you. Uh, yeah, I'll see you probably later tonight. Probably around the same time, 10, 30, 11. I'll put the video out, me breaking down and, look, and reacting to Travis Wingfield talking to Mike McDaniel. And then tomorrow we got the press conference. But other than that, guys, see you later. Grab yourself a hoodie if you want. <laughs> but like usual, stay classy and fins up.